disorders of intestinal rotation. This uh, congenital anomaly is uh, rare and uh, it occurs uh, in males twice than females. What is the etiology? During early intrauterine fetal life, the fetal intestine develops and grows faster than the abdominal cavity. This leading to herniation of the midgut in the umbilical cord. And this is called physiological umbilical hernia, which occur at the age of four to six weeks of gestation. At uh, the age of 10 to 12 weeks of gestation, the intestine return to the abdomen and rotate and fix it in the normal anatomical position. Sure failure of this rotation. Failure of this rotation leading to abnormalities. Failure of normal rotation and the fixation of the intestine leading to one of the following abnormalities and due to one of the following. Abnormal rotation may be due to non-rotation. The mid gut suspended from subiru mesenteric vessels and the small intestine the small intestine becomes located in the right side of the abdomen and the large intestine becomes located in the left side of the abdomen. This is called non-rotation failure completely of rotation or the condition may be incomplete rotation. In complete rotation, in this condition, there is adhesive bands called lead bands. These dense peritoneal bands extend from the right flank to the cecum. And these bands compress the duodenum, leading to congenital duodenal obstruction. There is a very rare condition in which rotation is reversed rotation. The normal rotation of uh, the intestine is 270 degree in anti-clockwise direction. You can look for this uh, picture for the development of the intestine very early. The mid gut is formed just of cephalic loop, cephalic loop, and the caudal loop. And in this caudal loop, develop here the cecum. Therefore, the caudal loop containing the cecum is below caudal and this is phallic loop to reach the adult position and the cecum comes in the right iliac fossa this loop should rotate 180 degree so that the caudal loop becomes cephalic then another rotation 80 degree 
sorry, 90 degree. 90 degree, so that the cecum becomes in the right iliac fossa. Therefore, normally the rotation is 270 degree in anti-clockwise direction. This rotation may be completely reversed and the rotation occur in clockwise direction. The force abnormality in uh, the rotation of the midgut is abnormal mesenteric fixation. This is the shape of the mesentery of the small intestine. And normally, the mesentery persists in certain area, like mesentery of small intestine, and absorbed and disappear in certain area, like absorption of the mesentery of the midgut here in the ascending colon and cecum, leading to fixation of the ascending colon and cecum to the posterior abdominal wall, and the cecum and the ascending colon become the retro peritoneal structure. This is normal. The cecum and ascending colon become the fixed in, in place in the right iliac fossa, and in the right lumbar region. There may be abnormal mesenteric fixation. Failure. Failure of disappearance of the mesentery of the midgut here, leading to mobile cecum. And the mobile cecum predisposed to valve loss of cecum. The same may occur in the duodenum. Abnormal mesenteric attachment in the terminal part of the duodenum leading to what is called paradiodenal peritoneal recesses. And in these paradiodenal peritoneal recesses, internal hernia may occur. There may be abnormality as a defect in the mesentery of the small intestine, and through this defect in the mesentery of small intestine, transmesenteric hernia may occur. All these are abnormalities in the mesentery of the midgut and leading to parasecal hernia, paradiodenal hernia, valve loss of cecum due to abnormal mobility of cecum, etc. Uh, what is the, the complication of this condition? The main complication is acute intestinal obstruction followed rapidly by strangulation. Why this? What is this? Due to abnormal rotation of the midgut, the root of mesentery, the root of mesentery which extend normally, this is the normal, which extend normally from here, from the duodenal flexure to the ileocecal valve here. The root of mesentery of small intestine is very wide, and the volvulus of small intestine never occur in normal individuals. But in this condition, this is the root of the mesentery. The root of the mesentery very narrow with liability of bulbless of the midgut, which usually followed by this bulbless around the superior mesenteric vessels, leading to occlusion of superior mesenteric vessels and rapid strangulation, gangrene perforation or paradiodenal hernia, paradiodenal hernia, or paracecal hernia, and strangulation, or obstruction by lead band, 
leading to obstruction of the duodenum. What is the clinical picture? The clinical picture usually manifests the condition manifests by acute and sun obstruction with repeated bile stained vomiting, which is very early due to obstruction with lead band. And in case of duodenal obstruction, the proximal distension is minimal, just distension of the proximal duodenum and the stomach. But in case of volvulus of the midgut, the distension is marked. And there is disaster. If there is bloody stool with manifestation of peritonitis, sure these manifestations are manifestations of strangulation. Acute instant obstruction is the main presentation with its complication. Less commonly, partial or intermittent attacks of instant obstruction may occur. And there may be, in older patients, there may be chronic, non-specific abdominal symptoms, like attacks of abdominal pain, peptic ulceration, or male absorption. Rarely, the condition may be asymptomatic and discovered accidentally during the investigation of any other disease. This congenital anomaly is severe congenital anomaly, usually associated with VACTERL. Other associated congenital anomaly, vertebral, cardiac, anorectal, etc. Differential diagnosis of this condition, other causes of uh, internal obstruction in newly born. Investigations. Sure as any intestinal obstruction. Dilated loops of intestine with fluid level. Or in case of obstruction by lead band, as we take before in duodenal obstruction, there may be a double bubble sign. In case of partial obstruction, not complete, in complete obstruction, nothing is taken orally. In case of partial obstruction, we can use contrast upper GIT study. As this, we inject in this patient through rail tube, Gastrographene. This will show distension of the duodenum and the abnormal position of the small intestine in the right side of the abdomen. Also, contrast enema. Contrast enema will show that the colon in the left side of the abdomen with abnormal site of the ileocecal valve. This is a cecum. And this is the cecum. And here, in abnormal site, not in the right iliac fossa as usual, this indicates male rotation of the intestine. Um, what is the treatment of this patient? Abnormalities of rotation of the medgut. If discovered, this is a surgical emergency. Because volvulus, rapid strangulation, and the gangrene and this occur very rapidly. Sure, as any sign of obstruction, resuscitation, nothing is taken orally. Rail tube suction, intravenous fluid, and the antibiotic. And the treatment of uh, intestinal mal rotation is LEDS procedure. LEDS procedure can be done through laparoscopic or open surgery. Open surgery, as we take before in duodenal obstruction, by transverse upper abdominal incision. And the first step in the operation is. 
explore explore the abdomen and evisceration take the intestine outside the abdomen and study the anatomy of this congenital anomaly and the abnormality after exploration of the abdomen and the evisceration to study the intestinal anatomy detorsion the torsion this is the torsion of the small intestine and we should detorsion in anti clockwise direction anti clockwise direction the torsion then division of leads bend then it is a very risky problem but it is both to volvulus which is the narrow root of the mesentery of small intestine but it is both to volvulus therefore incision in the peritoneum of the root of the mesentery and widening the root of the mesentery to avoid the possibility of re -volvus. Finally, appendectomy should be done because appendicular obstruction and subsequent appendicitis very common and this usually child with long life expectancy predisposed to appendicitis. Therefore, routine appendectomy should be done. Finally, finally, put the intestine and defix the intestine in the right side of the abdomen. In the right lateral baracolic gutter. And the large intestine is placed and fixed in the left lateral baracolic gutter. What is the right and the left lateral baracolic gutter? This is the normal anatomy. If normal anatomy occur, if normal anatomy occur, here in the abdomen there is a deep gutter, deep depression. On the right side of the ascending column, this deep gutter is called right lateral baracolic gutter. And the same on the left side, there is deep groove here, and deep gutter here called left lateral baracolic gutter. Therefore, in this congenital anomaly, we should fix the small intestine here in this groove, right baracolic gutter, and fix the large intestine in the left lateral baracolic gutter. This is the abnormal rotation of the midgut and the intestine. Thank you for good listening and good luck.